hand-eye coordination, strategic thinking, sense of balance, emotional control. All these things are coordinated in the brain. At the very fundamental basis, I think every thought or everything that happens in the brain really does mean that a chemical is released from one cell and recognised by the next cell. Um, whether that's moving uh, your arm or your leg or feeling depressed or, you know, thinking about, you know, what's cooked for dinner tonight, it's, basically it's going to involve a chemical. These chemicals, called neurotransmitters, are working all the time. But if a person takes alcohol or a drug, some cells release more of them. <laughs> the chemicals are picked up by receptors in neighbouring cells. Scientists are only just beginning to crack the complex chemistry of the brain. This particular test can't be done on women. So this time, Brian has to go it alone. We've been looking quite closely at the GABA benzodiazepine receptor system. And this is the brain's natural inhibitory or quietening down system. So when it is active, everything is being calmed down. The system, called GABA for short, may act like a natural tranquilizer, damping down anxiety. It may also allow people to develop a head for their liquor. We know that this system changes to protect the body because obviously if you could drink and drink and drink and drink, you would eventually become comatose and potentially die, of course. Well, an alcoholic who drinks regularly a bottle of spirits a day would, would kill himself and therefore the body reacts by, by changing this system. I used to have this thing in me all the time, you know, if they opened me up, my insides would be black, you know, I thought that would be... You know, I'm not human, like, there must be something inside me that's making all my organs work, because I just didn't think that a body could withstand such punishment, you know, for such a long time. Uh, but I am human, after all. <laughs> Dr. Sue Wilson is interested in the electrical activity in Brian's brain. Her results will show how well his GABA system is functioning. Well, they've got to be strategically placed. Have, yeah. Sue monitors Brian's brain waves for 30 minutes. Then... I'm going to start giving you the drug Midazolam, which is going to make you feel a little sleepy, OK? The drug hits the same brain system as alcohol does. Now Sue can tune into Brian's GABA receptors. OK, Brian, this is a kind of summary of that couple of hours that we were recording your brainwaves. Okay. And each of these lines is a kind of summary of about a minute. Now, this is the activity that represents when you're awake and um, taking notice. Mm -hmm. And here we give the injection. And this is the area that we're interested in. This is the activity produced by the drug. While Sue's studying how well the GABA receptors are working, Joe and Anne are trying to work out whether there are less of them in certain addicts. Ten seconds. Their secret to seeing inside the brain is a very small dose of radioactivity. Five, four, three, two, one, now. The radioactive tracer will pass into the brain and latch onto the receptors that Sue has shown in action. That's it. Sliding scale, so yellow is slightly less. The results are a series of horizontal slices of the brain, from bottom to top. Red and yellow indicate the highest concentrations of receptors, blue the lowest. A lot of this chemical system is in the cortex, which is the outside of the brain, and that's where you see this nice ring, in a sense, around the brain. This area is the frontal cortex, and we know that this gets affected by alcohol. And so this is this part of the brain coming through here, slice by slice. The very last part of the brain that often can be affected, and we wouldn't be surprised to see a change, would be here in the cerebellum, so in this area down here. The frontal cortex and uh, the cerebellum, yep. when you stop drinking it, do, do they rejuvenate themselves? I mean, is there any um, permanent damage to the brain that, that right. you know about? 
inevitably some people will permanently damage their brain, but for a lot of people who stopped drinking who've been dependent or alcoholic, generally what people have shown is that areas like the frontal cortex, which we know, as you said, can be badly affected by alcohol, do get better with time. And for you, you might see that in better concentration, better ability to think things through, um, ability to shift between um, one topic to another. My brain's still clearing at the moment, yeah. I think, but you know, I, yeah. I can concentrate and I can think about things a lot clearer than what, mm -hmm. than what I've been able to in, mm -hmm. in a long, long time. This area here is the cerebellum. You mentioned about being unsteady on your feet. We know that alcohol can affect this organ. Um, and essentially almost paralyse it, take it out of its proper activity, which is why people stagger and, and fall over. And it's interesting, not everybody has, seems to have this organ affected, this part of their brain affected. But again, we know that it can improve. So there can be physical change in the brains of addicts. It's not always clear whether the changes are a cause or an effect of the addiction. But some scientists believe that a vulnerability to alcoholism could be written in the genes.